Today we've heard about the uh, fall of Aleppo or impending fall of Aleppo and of course this is something that a lot of people are thinking about especially with the amount of news coverage that this issue has gotten over the past few days and obviously this is a great tragedy what has taken place in, in, in Aleppo hundreds of thousands of lives have been ruined thousands of people have been killed and this city which is in fact one of the oldest inhabit continuously inhabited cities of the world uh, which used to be a modern city a very modern city with a high cultural level a rich heritage has been uh, reduced or large parts of it have been reduced to rubble uh, obviously this is very tragic uh, and this is something that we sympathize with but the point is that while we have been fed daily these images of this extreme violence which is taking place in Aleppo at the same time the Western mass media the Western leaders are very very conveniently forgetting what is also taking place in the rest of the Middle East such as in in Yemen where millions of people are being bombarded and besieged uh, by Saudi uh, forces directly supported by US forces, by the US Air Force, by the US uh, Navy, by uh, US officers in its uh, control rooms and the same with other, other Western nations such as the UK who are also participating in that campaign selling arms to the Saudi army and this nation, Yemen, which is the poorest Arab nation is being bombed back into barbarism far many more casualties and, and victims in fact than they are in Aleppo and yet no one is speaking about it so while, uh, it, it, while the Western media uh, and Western leaders obviously do not fail to mention at any moment the brutality of the Russian, uh, uh, Russian Air Force and the Syrian Air Force, the Syrian Army and their allies in Aleppo they do fail to mention uh, that in fact before the real beginning of the offensive in, in eastern Aleppo there was a three week window of a unilateral ceasefire from the side of the Syrian uh, uh, from, the, from the side of the loyalist forces uh, in, during which time there were uh, eight humanitarian corridors opened up into Aleppo through which civilians could could escape and two of these led directly into rebel held uh, territories and all all rebels were told that they could in fact uh, along with their light weapons go uh, to other rebel held territories outside of the town of Aleppo in order to spare the lives uh, of, of the civilians uh, who were in there in fact, we have, to, we have to go even further back and to ask who is responsible for this situation? Who is responsible for what is, what is happening uh, today in, in, in Syria? And I would say that the biggest um, criminals in, in this affair have been the West, supported by their allies, uh, Turkey, uh, the Gulf states, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, uh, even to a, to a small degree, uh, Israel, their allies in, in, in the Middle East, who saw uh, the beginnings of, his, of the Syrian revolution as an opportunity to begin to intervene uh, in order to overthrow the Assad regime. And they pushed the revolution into, into a sectarian uh, civil war. They funded Islamic groups in the most uh, disgusting, the most barbaric, the most backward uh, uh, and, and reactionary groups. They funded them with billions of dollars. In fact, the Syrian civil war has been the single biggest uh, post on the CIA's budget throughout its history. Of course, that's the official budget we're talking about. But nevertheless, it's a huge post. More than a billion uh, dollars uh, per year that funneled into Syria. Uh, and even more has come from the Gulf states, from Saudi Arabia, from Turkey, in order to, 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 um, to basically overthrow what they saw uh, as the, or the, what they see as their adversary in the Middle East, which is the Assad regime and its allies in, in, in Russia. And they are the ones who are, in, who are responsible for the mess and for the barbarism that we see in the Middle East. And that's something we have to remember. So of course, as at this, while we do not have any kind of um, 
Uh, while we do not have any kind of uh, illusions in Assad or Russia, Putin, any of these people being uh, humanitarian or progressive of any kind and of having any humanitarian agendas for, uh, for, uh, for Syria, we should not nevertheless forget the other side of the coin. Uh, that the real criminals, the real people who dragged Syria into this civil war uh, are Western imperialism, in fact, US imperialism, Euro European imperialism, and their stooges and allies in, in, in the region. A lot of people are saying we should do something. Uh, and of course, that is a very, very understandable uh, notion. That's a very understandable uh, thing to say. A lot of people want to do something right now to stop the misery and, and the pain and the, and, and, and the barbarism which is uh, taking place in Syria. Um, but the point is, in order to do that, we need to understand what is it that we need to do something against. Because uh, the, the, the problem here, the, the essence of uh, the Syrian civil war is not uh, a question of stopping this or that uh, person just you know uh, stopping this or that president from from acting but it's but it's to understand where does the civil war come from and the civil civil war in my opinion is a reflection of the deep crisis of capitalism and that's what it is you see wars are an inher inherent par part of capitalism it comes out of the inherent uh, 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 competition and Competition within capitalism, which also reflects itself through nation states, and therefore wars and crises are inherent in, the, in, in this system. And the Syrian civil war is, in fact, a reflection of the deep crisis that world capitalism has come onto uh, uh, over the past uh, period. So that's the key. That's the key thing. That this is a reflection of. Uh, this is a result of capitalism and of the crisis of capitalism. And therefore, if you want to do something. Uh, what is what is needed is to build a force to uh, 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 challenge the system itself, to overthrow the system, which is completely irrational, which is completely anarchic and unruly. Is nobody is able to control it. Although everyone wants peace, all, everyone wants stability. No one is a able to impose it because their own the the only people who have an influence uh, over the, uh, uh, the situation are people who are fo following their own uh, self-interest, basically. Uh, and so therefore you need, you need to build, you need to do something against the system itself. And you need to start, first of all, it, it, for us here in the West, to build a force to fight the men enemy at home, to fight against U.S. imperialism and the, U US, uh, the Western imperialism. British imperialism, the British and uh, US uh, work, uh, ruling classes and the European ruling classes who have more than anyone a stake uh, in what's going on there, who are more than anyone guilty in the barbarism which has been unleashed in the Middle East after their disastrous adventures in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Libya and so on, which has only left, uh, left behind it a, a, a trail of blood and, and barbarism uh, really. And that's the key thing to, to, uh, to, to start with. Uh, overthrow uh, capitalism.